Greetings everybody, Shabbat Shalom to you who do believe. Uh, the last video I brought out, I showed you how you can detect a non-believer. If they're not wearing uh, these tassels or seat seats on the corners of their garments, then they're not keeping the entire law. They're not keeping the truth and what they speak. You should prove all things. <laughs> Uh, just as I am doing right now. I'm not going to tell you to do anything that I don't do personally. Now we had recently had a brother that uh, pointed out uh, Torah to the tribes here. Uh, this fellow here, he's speaking against the truth and I, I'll play what he says first and see if you can pick up on what is the deceptions or not and please don't go running to this fellow's place for Passover and I'll explain it to you why I'll use the scriptures please prove all things listen closely to what this fella is speaking here and it gives me goose chills you know but I may end up there at six o'clock this evening uh, if he's got live chat and I will rebuke the fellow if uh, he's there speaking falsehoods if I'm awake at that time. I've been getting to sleep prior to Sabbath even here when it started. I fell asleep about a half hour before Sabbath even began because I just got so tired. Today I got up at 7 this morning so maybe it's for a reason instead of 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock in the morning like I've been doing. Uh, maybe it's so that I can stop in and uh, offer some correction to this man and, and the poor sheep that are following him. Just because you're seeking, don't listen to everything, you know. Chew the meat off the bones and throw the bones away. But some of these people, you know, they're wolves in sheep's clothing. And I hope this man's not one. I hope when I make this video and I give it to him in the love of our king, that he'll repent bitterly and uh, even close down his April 2nd uh, Passover that he and his friends are going to be keeping at the table of Satan the devil. Uh, please do listen closely to what he says and I'll point out the fallacies afterwards so that you can see how to prove all things and to prove those by the ear instead of the visualness of the seat seats, the uh, tassels, the fringes, and the lots that I doubt that he's wearing. So listen close, please. Greetings to the 12 tribes scattered. Man, I, I think I might have to change my greetings. <laughs> Man. Abroad, I want to talk to you about the Passover. Yes, it is coming up already. Passover 2020. Torah to the tribes is going to be celebrating this year at Alders Gate Retreat here in Salem, Oregon. Easy access from the airport, the bus station, or Amtrak. Passover is gonna be Thursday, April the 2nd, for the Passover meal, all the way until Sunday, April the 5th. There is a description and registration below and it is going to be a phenomenal time, Yahweh willing, for three nights, four days, including with eight meals, which of course includes the Holy Passover service. And what? Goose chills, man. I mean, what this fella's teaching. Now, he said April 2nd, and for three nights and four days, they're going to keep the Passover. Well, first thing first, this is uh, March 2020, the calendar uh, for the new moons and such. And as you see down here, the new moon is going to be the 24th. Biggest problem is the ears of barley have not been sighted yet in Israel, on Mount Zion. They have not been sighted yet for the month to begin for the month of Abib wherein Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread would be found within. Now here at the new moon is on the 24th of March, and counting, the 24th is the first day, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth day is the 31st of March. 
So you got the eighth day, 31st of March. Let's go to April, eighth day. This is the ninth and tenth. The tenth day of the month is April 2nd. But what does scripture say? Hopefully you caught this. Here in Leviticus 23, verse 4, These are the feasts of Yahweh, holy convocations which ye shall proclaim at their appointed times. On the fourteenth day of the first month at twilight is the Father's Passover, which means the thirteenth day at sunset begins the fourteenth day of the month. And therefore, in the evening of that month, on the 14th day, right after the 13th of sundown, begins the 14th, is when you're to keep the Passover. And you're supposed to uh, roast the lamb with the entrails and everything in it. Of course, finding an animal on this planet today, or this world, I should say, on this earth, I don't believe it's a globe as they depict, but that doesn't matter. You shouldn't just stop listening to what I say because I'm not preaching it. It's my personal belief that our Father put a firmament over us and all sorts of things, and it's not a globe as they like you to see. In fact, if it was, they'd have a lot more pictures of the globe, but they really don't. It says, on the 14th day of the first month at twilight is the Father's Passover. Then it says, and on the 15th day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread to Yahweh. Seven days you must eat unleavened bread. So there for a 24-hour period from the, the 13th at sunset beginning the 14th. So the 14th at evening until the 14th at sunset is the Passover. It's a one-day event. It's not a feast. At the end of the 14th day at sunset begins this 15th day that it talks about in Leviticus chapter 23, verse 6. And at that sunset on the 14th begins the 15th, which is a Sabbath day, okay, regardless of what day of the week it falls on, the first day and the last day of any feast is a Sabbath day. And you'll always have a seventh day uh, as well in their Sabbath, and sometimes too, because they might just fall on a Sabbath to begin with. But anyway, the Feast of Unleavened Bread is to be kept for seven days. Now this fellow wants you to go down on April 2nd, about the 10th day of the month, where it says the 14th day of the month at twilight is Yahweh's Passover. He wants you to keep it on the 10th day. And he wants you to pay him a lot of money so he can provide you meals for three nights and four days, keeping a Passover that's only one day long. <laughs> You'll be celebrating the Passover all the way through, and, and it's on the wrong time. Now, if he had the correct date anyway of Passover, well, he'd still be keeping Passover when the Feast of Unleavened Bread is supposed to be kept. <laughs> and this guy's feasts are talked of by Amos here. Our father was speaking uh, here in Amos 5.20. He says, Is not the day of Yahweh darkness and not light? Is it not very dark with no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your feast days. Now what's he mean by your feast days? Listen to this fellow once again. Greetings to the 12 tribes scattered abroad. I want to talk to you about the Passover. Yes, it is coming up already. Passover 2020. Torah to the Tribes is going to be celebrating this year at Alders Gate Retreat here in Salem, Oregon. Easy access from the airport, the bus station, or and So convenient. Passover is going to be Thursday, April the 2nd for the Passover meal all the way until Sunday, April the 5th. There once again, the way that you count the days is the first day is the day of the new moon. You don't look for a crescent. The crescent will bring you up all the way up to one of these other days, wherein when you keep 
the feast as they're supposed to be kept, and they're not if they use a crescent, you won't even have a full moon during the feast. Because every 14.765 days from a new moon, you're going to come right up here the next month to a full moon. That's 14.765 days from the new moon. And 14.765 days from the full moon to the next new moon is 14.765 days. King David and Jonathan both knew exactly before the new moon took place, just like you can do right now by looking at these calendars. You can see where it says full moon, you know when the full moon is. You could see here on the 1st of April is going to be the first quarter. But the previous month, this new moon is the first day in counting the days for the Feast of Abib or whatever. And this is not set in stone yet. Our Father has not put out when the new moon for the Feast of uh, Unleavened Bread and for the Passover is going to take place because the ears of barley have not been yet uh, seen on Zion at this time. So in order to set a date to begin with, for the first month, you have to see the ears of barley. And when they're going to be ready for the sheaf offering and the, the wave offerings and everything during the feast, which takes place on a Sunday, the day after a seventh-day Sabbath during the Feast of Unleavened Bread is when these are to be brought in, the ears of barley would have to necessarily be ready to bring in these offerings for the feast. If they're not ready, then the feast is not when Yahweh said it. Now, when the ears of barley are ready, that is the month that our Father set. So, here from this new moon, like I showed you in April, that he, or, uh, in March, which he should be considering, up to the second is the tenth day of the month. And what did scripture say? It said the 14th day of the month. So hopefully you had caught this yourself. Hopefully this man will repent. Uh, the 15th day at the sunset of the 14th day begins the seven-day Feast of Unleavened Bread, where you can't have any leavening in your houses or whatever. It needs to be taken out and destroyed, you know, on the day of Passover or before it needs to be destroyed gotten rid of out of your houses off your lands the leaven needs to be removed for this and the way the fellow's having his feast if he had the proper day passover would be overlapping into the feast of unleavened bread and i didn't even hear him mention the feast of unleavened bread did you please give him a view there don't listen to what he says but this is from uh tour to the tribes uh, he's got 23,000.4, 23,400 subscribers listening to these deceptions. I like his ring, ain't it a beauty? Must have some wealth going on there. He will after his dinner. Now, mister, I don't know what your name is, but I pray that you will repent of this. Stop being a deceiver to these people. Just because they're seeking and they're lost doesn't mean you should take advantage of them and usher them right into Satan's table. Stop it. Don't do it no more. Repent of these things. Cancel your Passover. Just like Amos said, I hate, I despise your feast days, and I do not savor your sacred assemblies. And then he even gets down here, because I'm sure you'll be playing the music and such. He says, take away from me the noise of your songs, for I will not hear the melody of your stringed instruments. And then we've got, uh, hopefully, maybe uh, Isaiah as well here. Isaiah 1.14. Read yourself. He says, your new moon feast and your appointed festivals. Your, your appointed festivals. I hate with all my being. They have become a burden to me. I am weary of bearing them. When you spread out your hands in prayer, I hide my eyes from you. Even when you offer many prayers, I am not listening. Your hands are full of blood. 
wash and make yourselves clean. Take your evil deeds out of my sight. Stop doing wrong. Please do this. In fact, it tells you over here. Let's take a look in Isaiah 23 real quick. And I'm going to show you what you should be doing instead of creating your own feast there, mister. Oh, it's supposed to be in Jeremiah. Right there, 23. And we'll go down here a little bit into the list of scriptures. And I'll show you something that you really should heed to. Come on, thing. Any other time, you know, it'd be bingy to bangy to bingy to, you know. But I guess Satan's, you know, trying to stick her fingers in there, horns in there, you know. To, and she don't really have horns, you know. It's just something that they put on them to make them look nice. Uh, talks about the, uh, right here. This is what our father wrote about that man in the video and others that are preaching the same thing that are leaning on their own understanding not looking in the scriptures to do their thing but thinking they're going to teach Torah <laughs> Jeremiah 23 or Uremia 23 verse 20 the anger of Yahweh will not turn back until he fully accomplishes the purposes of his heart in days to come in some let me see I think here uh uh, that's verse 20. Let's go to the New King James Version. I believe that it uh, gives a little bit better account of what it's saying there. He says, The anger of Yahweh will not turn back until he has executed and performed the thoughts of his heart. In the latter days, you will understand it perfectly. Why? He says, I have not sent these prophets. What prophets? Well, here's one of them right there. I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, not April 2nd until, you know, the 5th, you know, where we'll celebrate a one-day Passover for three nights and three days. Just give us your money and we'll provide the meals. And they would have turned them away from their evil way and from their evil of their doings. That's what these false prophets should be doing. They should be instead standing in our Father's counsel, giving them the words from our Father and not from their own imaginations. And you are to prove all things. <laughs> Hold fast that which is righteous. And what is righteous? That's right. Deuteronomy 6 verse 25. It will be righteousness unto you if you keep his commandments. The only way you can keep his commandments is by keeping the give or take 613 laws that apply to you and putting your trust in our king only. Anything outside of that's not going to bring you any closer to salvation. You can brush your teeth 16 times a day. It's going to wear the enamel off your teeth. It did mine. But it's not going to get you any closer to the kingdom. You could take red ruby... Uh, Ormus, uh, nano gold, all day long, you know, until you die. It's not going to get you any closer to the kingdom. You could chew bubble gum or stop chewing bubble gum. You can do this and stop doing that. It's not going to help you. If you're not sinning, that's what's going to get you in the kingdom. If you are sinning, then true repentance is to stop it. Mister, over here, stop it. <laughs> stop lying to these poor lost sheep. You're going to burn if you don't. And this is just a warning. As one of the 144,000 hearing the garbage and the trash that you're speaking against our king, just like Jeremiah said, and so did the others, if you would have stood in my counsel and have caused my people to hear my words. And what words are those? These are the feasts of Yahweh, holy convocations, which you shall proclaim at their appointed times. Why do you do different, mister? <laughs> On the 14th day of the first month of twilight is the Father's Passover. 
And on the 15th day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. So how in the hell are you going to keep a three-night and a three-day Passover, you hypocrite? You're a murderer of my father's children, and I pray you repent. If you need help, I'll help you. But right now, I'm against you, my friend. I love you, but I hate what you're teaching. Stop it. And with all those who do trust in our king and love his ways, I'll be bringing out before too long... When we find out, I've got brothers and sisters checking on ears, on uh, ears of barley, on Zion. And hopefully, as uh, soon as we spot them, I'll get out as quick as I possibly can. A video when the true dates are going to be. And not, you know, I, I understand the desire for people to want to run and assemble themselves with others. Regardless if they're right or wrong, they love the fellowship. And, and for some reason, so many people think as long as they're talking, the Lord and the God and the Jesus or the Yahuwah and the Yahushua and, and all these other things, that they're actually in line for salvation. But yet, most of them won't be wearing these, and if they do, they do it out of hypocrisy or just to be seen by others. People, please. Align your hearts with the scriptures. Read the scriptures and believe them. Don't believe these people that are out there making their own appointed times and their own appointed feast days. Prove all things. I just showed you how to do it. Please use that example from now on and walk in those ways. Prove all things. Read the scriptures and listen to what these people speak and you'll see who the wolves are in sheep's clothing. Now, I pray, mister, you get rid of your wolf garment there, you know, and become a sheeple instead. And with that, my friends, please study. Don't let these people overtake you and, and feed you uh, the, uh, the stuff that comes out of the uh, south end of a northbound cow as truth. May our king forgive you, buddy, but you got to repent if you want forgiveness. With that, my friends, I love you. Please enjoy the Sabbath. If you're watching this on another day, please know that if you are of the truth and of the way, I'm praying for you, and so are our brothers and sisters who love our King. And with that, I say, peace be with all of you. Prove all things.